this particular video, I want to discuss setting up the Easy As Accounting software. When you first run the Easy As Accounting software, the very first time after you've just installed it, this screen's going to appear. And it tells us this is the first time you're activating the accounting software and it wants you to set up some of the parameters of the system. Obviously, if you are already an existing customer and you've had a PC crash and you've reinstalled Easy As, you've run the program for the first time and this screen appears, then right now, all you need to do is to click this icon up here which says Restore. Because what you're obviously going to be doing now is you're going to be restoring your backup data files into the Easy As system. Because you don't want to go ahead and insert all this information that's irrelevant to you because you're not starting all over again. You want to use your existing backup. That's obviously hoping you were creating backups of your data files. If you weren't, then you're in a lot of pain. That's what you need to do right now if you're an existing client and you have previous data backup files. Now, if you're a new client, right now, what you need to do is you need to go ahead and enter and fill in all of these three sections. The first section is self-explanatory. Now, you can skip everything else in the rest of the section one here if you want it. Want, but, you know, it's probably better to put it in now. So you enter your address details, all this information here, but you see this little box here, currency symbol. Depending upon what country you're from and depending upon what symbol you're going to use, here we use the dollar symbol. You might use the pound or some other symbol in your country, so put whatever symbol it is. So I'm not, I'm not going to fill in the rest of this, I'm just going to leave it as is. Section 2 here is simple. Are you required to collect and record sales tax? Sales tax is an extra charge that some governments apply to goods or services. If sales tax is not applicable to you or your country, click no. That's simple. If you have to record sales tax, then you click yes. And the first couple of screens come up for individual reasons. When I click yes, this pop-up comes up and it says, do you live in Canada? If you don't, click no. If you do, click yes. So I'm going to say no. And it comes up and says, do you live in Australia? If you don't, click no. If you do, click yes. In this instance, I'm going to click yes. That's it. Now, let's have a look at that again. If I click yes again, it comes, starts again. If you live in Canada, click yes. And it asks you, are you required to collect two forms of sales tax? That's why that particular screen was coming up. If you don't, click no. Naturally, if you don't live in Canada, no. If you don't live in Australia, click no. That's simple. You just answer the questions that it's asking. It's, ask, it's doing that for a reason because if you live in Canada, you may be required to collect two forms of sales tax. So it sets that up from the beginning. You can change that down the road, of course, if you need to. But it sets it up for you. If you live in Australia, it wants to know that question because it, it's not to do with rates of taxes or anything like that. It's to do with the invoicing. Because at the top of sales tax invoices in Australia, they have to be called a tax invoice. In other countries, they're just called an invoice. An invoice is an invoice. It doesn't change. So that question just solves that little equation without confusing it. So we don't tell you why, although I already have. Just answer the question. Now, if you're collecting sales tax, and you need to put down what the name of the sales tax is. It might be called GST. It might be called HST. It might be called PST. Whatever it is, enter the name of the sales tax. And enter the rate that's applicable to the sales tax. It might be 5.6%, it might be 7%, whatever it is. And if you happen to live in Canada, then of course, and you happen to live in Canada and you've got two forms of sales tax, then of course you're going to have an additional sales tax coming up. I'm just going to cancel that out so I can move on. This next box here is perhaps the most important box out of this whole setup screen. This box here has to be correct, guys. You can change any information in sections 1 and 2 later down the road. You can never change section 3. This must be correct, and it must be correct from day 1. It's asking a simple question. What date does your financial year start from? It's not asking you... So if you're an Australian, 
your financial year starts the 1st of July. This is not asking you to enter your calendar year or today's date. It's asking you what date your financial year starts from. A lot of other countries do start and run from calendar year on the 1st of January to the 31st of December. A lot of other com- companies start in April and start in March. So whatever country you're from, whatever the first start date of your financial year is, enter it here. So because I'm in Australia, I'm going to put the 1st of July, versus the 7th, 0101107 of the 11th. Now have a look where it comes up here. It comes up here and it tells you, it's going to ask you, is this your financial year? The first data, date of your financial year is the 1st of July 2011. Last day, 30th of June 2012. Is that the financial year you're in and is that the correct date? It's telling you that. Do not go to the next step if this is incorrect. If this is incorrect, change this. Now, particularly for those in Australia, you might find that you can't enter the dates in the way I did. You might find that if you entered in as 01, because in Australia we go by the date, then the month, then the year. The majority of other countries around the world don't do that. They go by month, then date, then year. So in Australia, if you can't, if you can't enter it in and get the right dates, try entering in month, date, then year, and see if that works. And if that happens, then you need to change your regional settings in your computer because they're wrong. Okay, so just remember that. But what I want you to remember, no matter what country you're from, is get this right. There is information here and explains this, and it tells you, you will not be able to change these dates at a later time without uninstalling and reinstalling and starting from scratch. You cannot change this later, guys. If you enter six months' worth of data into the accounting program and you discover that you started by today's date, because, for example, today's date happens to be the 3rd of August. So if I just looked at this and thought, oh, they want today's date, and I entered in today's date, third of August, and say that's what they wanted and continue on, all of a sudden I'm going to run out, I'm going to get half up in my financial year, and I'm going to discover that I can't go any further. It's telling me, the system's going to say, you you can't enter that date because that's in another financial year. And I'm going to turn around and say, oh, well, I don't know what happened. It's because you entered the wrong date in the beginning. And if you do that, you have to wipe everything and start again. This system calculates this particular financial year and the next 25 financial years because it allows you to jump back to previous financial years as you go. So you can, at any stage, go back two or three financial years and look at your previous data. But if you don't enter the dates incorrectly from day one, it cannot calculate that. And that's why this date has to be precise, guys. So get the date right and move on. Once you've done it once, it's done. So once you've done that, you click continue. But as you could see, I entered the wrong date there a minute ago, didn't I? But I'm not worried about that because I'm just showing you how to use the program. Once you click continue, it comes up and it says to select your financial year. If I click select, all you've got to do is tell it what financial year you're in. Now, if you're in, for example, the States, it's probably not going to say 2011-2012. It's going to say 2011-2011 because most people run by calendar year. So whatever country you're from, have a look at that and decide which date it is. Now, the EasyAS system normally sets up the previous financial year for you as well. So in this example, I started at this year but it also set up the previous year for us. And you will see it set up the next 30-odd financial years here. So it says, which financial year are we going to start our system, start entering from? So we're going to start entering this financial year. So I'm going to click Continue now. I select that. Then I click Continue. It's going to one array, and it's going to do a few things. And it comes up with this box. Now we know we're finished. The next step is we have to exit the system. By exiting, it completes the setup. So we exit, and now all we need to do is run the program again. And the next time we run Easy As, we're set up. We'll go into it and we'll end up at the main menu. Before we finish this video off, 
if, for example, you did not finish entering your address details or you entered in that incorrectly or you want to change something, you can actually change that once you open the program. You can go in there and you can change that. Just go back to the, just jump online to the Easy As website, go to their video section, which is where you probably are anyway, and look down the list and you, you see something, you see a video for business profiles. If you select that particular video, that will show you how to go in now and change your address details again.